Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Seyran Ateş, Sex, Revolution and Islam playing as part of 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, we are happy to host the director of the film, Nefise Özkal Lorentzen, who is joining us from Oslo. Hi, Nefise. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you here in, nice uh, to meet you too. in this digital world. <laughs> yes, even virtually. Nice meeting you. Uh, so, Nefisa, you're a Turkish-Norwegian writer, filmmaker, and producer uh, living in Oslo. You have produced and directed several documentaries related to Islam, and you received several awards and nominations with these films from prestigious festivals such as ITFA, uh, Göteborg Film Festival, Rhode Island Film Festival, etc. Um, gender and Islam is a uh, main focus in your films. And in Seyran Ateş, Sex Revolution and Islam, you portray Seyran Ateş, a human rights lawyer, founder, and imam of a mosque in Berlin, uh, a brave and, is, and is inspiring woman who works for the modernization of Islam. So can you let us know, uh, what made you get into making of this documentary? Of course, uh, I am coming from a very secular family. Uh, I, I'm uh actually just you know like ordinary muslim woman uh but after 9 11 i was really thinking about my uh, faith uh, i was thinking do i really belong to this religion uh which is you know not so nice especially after 9 11 so uh i was like i mean i was secular so i was just trying to you know, leave the religion and just I have nothing to do with that. So I had some gay friends and they were trying to be in the religion. They, their struggle was be in Islam. So I, they were like, uh, Islam was not accept, accepting them, but they wanted to be in Islam. So it was like for me, a big question. So that's the reason I uh, decided to make a film about Islam and homosexuality to search like why they want to stay in Islam uh, what is the beauty that they say uh, they see? Uh, so I worked a lot about this film, and uh, I finished it in two thousand and eight. And then I made a second part of this trilogy. Uh, it's about Islam and feminism, which is also related to my personal story and many personal stories actually from yeah from different women. Um, so the film was finished two thousand and eleven. And I continued with Man Islam. Uh, it's about Islam and masculinity. So my goal was to uh, travel different parts of the world, like Indonesia, Bangladesh, Kuwait, uh, Turkey, um, and Pakistan, and to meet men who uh, are doing something uh, for women's rights, human rights, and children's rights. So uh, then I did this film, Man Islam. So actually, I felt like I finished my uh, trilogy on Islam and gender. And then I decided to continue in this topic and uh, make a film about female uh, imams, uh, because I read about the female imams in China and they had a long, long, long tradition to have female imams. Uh, so that was like my idea uh, to meet all the female imams uh, all around the world and gather them maybe in Northern Norway and uh, to uh, make them like my working title for this project was the first supper because everybody knows about the, the last supper so we have a references about you know the jesus and everything but we don't know the first supper so that was like my main idea uh, mm -hmm. to do this film and my mother gave me an article from new york times uh, about sarah matesh I said, wow, this woman, she really has all the three films that I have worked within like 15 years. So I wrote to her a very long letter and sent my previous films to her and uh, just, you know, traveled to Berlin and met her. And that was it. And then I decided that I'm going to make a, not a kind of conceptual film about female imams uh, all around the world, but uh, I'm going to make a portrait about Seyran Atesh. And uh, thank you, Mama, for giving me this article. So, so yeah, so it's just like, this is how you make films, actually. You suddenly change your path. <laughs> so that was, that was it for me. 
Great story. Thank you for sharing it. Um, so we see that Seyran Atesh is a very brave and optimistic woman. Uh, she's insulted, she was shot, uh, she receives uh, fatwas and death threats all the time. She has to live under constant police protection. Uh, and yet, yet her optimism is really amazing. Uh, as a filmmaker, you witnessed uh, how did she process all of these challenges when making the film, uh, I assume. So could you tell us how did you establish the balance in your film without sinking into pessimism? Uh, that's a great question, uh, actually, because uh, I also feel like, I mean, you know, like many Turkish people, I'm kind of a melancholic person. I love Hüzün, I, 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 I love to, you know, play songs who are so sad that I can cry. I mean, this is kind of in my, my genes in a way. Uh, but, but at the same time, I do not have the luxury of being pessimist. I think Seyran also has the same attitude. I mean, we are living in a world that is really going kind of bananas. So we don't have time to be pessimist. Uh, I mean, even though we can have this Turkish vision, uh, which is fine when you are, you know, uh, listening to music and eating uh, dinner, um, but in the real world, so we have to keep on going and we have to keep on fighting uh, because we don't have this luxury. So mm -hmm. that is the only chance we have. It's the optimism and it is the, uh, that we, we should be inspired by each other. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is this is this makes me keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this quote I would like to uh, have from Seyran Atesh. Uh, she says at the end of the film, she says that, uh, quoting from Bertolt Brecht, mm -hmm. "If you fight, you can lose. If you don't fight, you are already lost." Lost. So I, uh, I mean, as a filmmaker, you are sharing the same vision with her, which is really amazing. Uh, which makes the film more strong, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, I would like to say, I would like to ask uh, another question. There are emotionally intense moments in the film, such as Tehran Atesh visiting the family of one of the victims of the terrorist attack in, in Norway, or uh, when Tehran's nephew Tugay explains the emotional difficulties uh, since he realized that he is gay. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the major emotional challenges you faced uh, during the production of the film? Oh, uh, thank you for asking that because uh, I think that is the reason I, I make films because I, I like to listen to people and I like to observe people. So this film is a kind of point of view film and I'm not, I said to Seyran, I'm not going to make a film about the mosque. It's like, it's not an advertisement about her mosque, but it is just, uh, a point of view film. I'm following Seyran and Seyran's life. And in a way I am, uh, I am interpreting her, her, her life in a way uh, through my visual images. So uh, when I uh, first met uh, Seyran, there was a young boy kind of, you know, having a little camera and following Seyran. And he, he was always coming to my frame. I said, I mean, I said to my photographer, let's find something because he's always in the frame so i didn't know that he was uh, in the family and i didn't know two guy at the time so we uh, started to uh, you know talk to each other then i became almost like a family member of seyran uh, when we traveled to madrid uh, two guy was also there uh, so he he's just a fantastic young man he was shy uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, not talking much uh, at that time. So when I came back to Berlin again, uh, so Seyran told me that, oh, you know what, what happened like this? Uh, Tugay, Tugay is now out. Now he said that he is gay, uh, but the family probably knew before, but it was a relief for him. And I have seen the change. I have seen this person that he was like, all his soul uh, was like flying <laughs> in a way. So it was very, very strong. And I then asked him, I mean, it, I, it wasn't like planned because 
because his life was different when I met him. So then I asked him if he can share his life story in the film. And that was a very strong experience, actually, when I was interviewing him uh, and he was very emotional. I was very emotional. I mean, he was crying. I was crying. So, uh, I mean, we were really bonding. But what is important for me to uh, be witness to a, a young man's uh, change in his uh, life in his manners because he found himself I mean when he was very young so he was uh, on the way to the really extremism and then through through life so he found his real life he found his real self and as a as a filmmaker when you really uh, witness this change uh, I think um, yeah something happens uh, it, Really, he really moved me. And yesterday we had a Oslo premiere and many people really, uh, really move uh, to hear his story. And he's an incredible, incredible storyteller. And he is really dedicated now. He really dedicated his life uh, to human rights and LGBT rights. And he's working in the mosque and he's also studying Islamic studies. I mean, he's a young man with a deep, deep knowledge. So he's, he's very inspiring. That's a great story. I mean, it, 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 the film became transformative both for you and both for him and everybody else. I mean, for the audience as well. I mean, for, <laughs> that's really amazing. Um, so the Oscar nomination is really exciting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the results. And like you said, the feedbacks from the audience, it's really important. And I mean, hopefully next year uh, when we organize the festival in physical, um, in the upcoming years, we can meet face to face. And uh, inshallah. And, <laughs> inshallah. Nefisa, if there anything you would like to add, uh, please feel free to comment. Okay, um, so in the film you see Seyran uh, lying, and I'm I'm uh, interviewing her when she's kind of in the forest and uh, in this horizontal position, because I call her uh, I call her horizontal Imam, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, she is not uh, all these other uh, male Imams who are vertical, and they have they see power in a vertical way, like they want to climb up. But Seyran's way of understanding power is very horizontal, and which means that she is including uh, many people in her community, and she has a different way of seeing what power is. So that is the reason, I mean, you know, whenever you see Seyran with the bodyguards, you also feel some kind of like, oh God, I mean, she's uh, I, untouchable. So I just wanted to make her in this position while she was talking about her own story, it was in a way like she was making a kind of entreatment uh, with herself, and she was talking her fun, her her story to herself. So this is like this is the reason I uh, put her in this horizontal situation to make the connection with audience. Because if she was, you know, standing like that the audience uh, have another uh, way of approaching her. So actually, I really hope that Seyran's story uh, inspires Turkish youth and they can also start their gender revolution or uh, their uh, existential revolution. Because when Seyran does, anyone can do. And remember, Seyran is coming from a shanty town of Turkey, and she made herself uh, with all her education and all her motivation. So I'm sure uh, Turkish youth, when they hear Seyran's story, they will also get inspired. And Letisa, thank you very much for sharing your inspiring film with us and joining the Q&A session. Thank you very much that you include my film because there are so many great films uh, in those days. So it's a great honor. Thank so you so much. Big love to your audience. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.